think sort of big picture and not to paint too broad of a generalization, if probiotics can reduce inflammation, they may be able to have an impact on libido. And part of this is because when there's inflammation, hormones tend to not do what you want them to do. Men may be more likely to aromatize testosterone into estrogen. And ironically, females may be more likely to turn to, uh, their estrogen into testosterone. But let's look at what this study found. It was a randomized control trial, sort of small, 100 women with depression, and they were treated with SSRI antidepressants or the antidepressant plus a probiotic. The probiotic was a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium at a dose of 8 billion CFU per day, again, pretty standard. And they found that the group that had the addition of the probiotic had improved libido, improved sexual satisfaction, and probably not surprisingly, improved marital satisfaction at the same time. They found that there was similarity in improvements in depression across both groups. So both groups saw improved mood, but only the probiotic group saw improved libido, sexual satisfaction, and marital sat uh, satisfaction. So something interesting here is happening with the co-administration of probiotics. And I'll just quote the researchers here. The results of this study show that taking probiotics for eight weeks may improve the severity of depression disorder, sexual function, and sexual satisfaction in depressed women treated with SSRIs. So pretty compelling conclusion and certainly something to consider. And, and I think important just to mention, because occasionally people will wonder, well, are probiotics contraindicated with SSRIs? This study would suggest that they're not. And in fact, they're probably quite um, synergistic. Let's start our discussion with candida. Now, candida is a normal resident in the gut. So it's not to say any candida is a bad thing. As we're learning more about the microbiota, the world of bacteria, fungus, protozoa, viruses, the concept of balance or eubiosis is becoming progressively understood to be the target. 2023 randomized control trial, 80 women, in this case with vaginal candida, certainly something that's unpleasant, odor, discharge, discomfort, they were given either fluconazole, which is a antifungal medication, or a probiotic. And in this case, the probiotic was a capsule, lactobacillus acidophilus at 1 billion CFU per day. So standard probiotic, standard dose. Comparatively, they found that the probiotic was as effective as the antifungal medication fluconazole for resolving vaginal candida. And by the way, if this has been helpful, please comment and subscribe. This really does help us reach more people who are trying to improve their health. So it, it is uh, quite deeply appreciated. The fact that one of the mechanisms through which probiotics fight candida is said simply, they will poke holes in the membrane of candida and therefore the things that candida needs to undergo cellular metabolism can leak out and other things that your immune system might be using to kill the candida, like inflammatory cytokines, can permeate in. And for those of you watching this, that is what you're seeing in this schematic from a journal paper, just to try to give you one more reminder that probiotics are actually quite effective. Antimicrobials, whether the microbe be candida, bacteria, fungus, they're not indiscriminate, meaning if you took a dose that maybe was higher than you thought it should be, you don't run the risk of missing the sweet spot and wiping out all of the candida from your gut. Because we're using these live organisms that confer health benefit to the host. What we don't see is something like you might see with fluconazole, which is some sort of rebound overgrowth or imbalance because the fluconazole is much more foreign and a probiotic, given that we are replicating exposure to environmental bacteria, which we have quantified from a very early time point in life, was an important part of our evolution, just like pressure is to bone and resistance is to muscle. So therefore, 
it's much more difficult, I suppose you would say, to use probiotics incorrectly. There's a few theories regarding how the gut may impact metabolism. One is that poor nutrient absorption can lead you to overeat as your system is kind of hunting for the nutrition it needs. Another one is that the bugs in your gut can kind of pull at your craving mechanisms and make you eat food that you may not otherwise want, like sugar cravings is often attributed to fungus. Thirdly, that if there is inflammation coming from the gut, this inflammation may inhibit certain enzymes like hormone-sensitive lipase, which allows your body to metabolize fat cells. We can test these theories, right? The theories are one thing, but we want to juxtapose or fact check the theories against the studies. So that's where this 2023 clinical trial comes in. 46 obese women, they were given either L-carnitine tartrate and placebo or the L-carnitine tartrate plus a blend of probiotic and prebiotic. What they found was that the blend of probiotic, prebiotic plus carnitine led to nine pounds of weight loss whereas those just getting the carnitine had about two pounds of weight loss. They also found improvements in blood sugar and insulin resistance markers. And this study did adjust for physical activity and calories so as to make sure that, well, maybe the people that were given the intervention just happened to be eating less and therefore the results are confounded by that. Well, they adjusted and controlled for activity and for calories. When mothers consume probiotics, they reduced the risk of their children having eczema by 49%. Quoting, probiotics are effective in the prevention of eczema. Pretty interesting. They also found that the most benefit was achieved when mom took the probiotic during pregnancy and while breastfeeding for a duration of 6 to 12 months. And part of this probably has to do to or do with the fact that the gut microbiota takes two to three years to form and that has an impact on the immune system. So this is why a longer duration of supplementation is probably more conducive to healthy microbiota and resulting immune system formation and development. Pretty comprehensive meta-analysis looking at 24 randomized control trials of breastfeeding mothers and their infants. They found that when probiotics were taken by mom, it led to a 70% reduction in infant colic, and it also increased beneficial bacteria in the infant gut. They looked at various probiotics, so across these trials, different formulas were used, and the dosages ranged from 1 billion to 900 billion, so not small dosages, even though they're in children, and leading these researchers to comment as follows, lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, streptococcus thermopolis, and S. boulardii or saccharomyces boulardii can be used as maternal supplements to promote infant health. And this is a good transition into the meta protocol that we've been developing now for a while to give you a starting point. Pick one probiotic, a lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend, or a Saccharomyces boulardii, or a soil-based probiotic. And respectively, the dosages are 1 to 50 billion, 10 to 15 billion, or 2 to 6 billion of these probiotics. And a starting point to evaluate would be 2 to 3 months. They can be used for longer, but that is just a protocol to get you started. Okay, well, I hope this helps with appreciating the impact of probiotics, giving you a protocol to get started. And if you do try it, or if you have tried it already, let me know how it goes in the comments. All right, guys, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'll talk to you next time. 